Ever wish you could find a way to put the passion, intimacy, and emotional connection back in your marriage? That would be something, right? Well, keep an open mind and stay tuned. Don't be squeamish or shy because the Raw Marriage Show digs deeply into the adult realities of marriage with a tell it like it is approach. So get ready to get raw and real. Raw marriage begins in three, two, one. I'm Zev Halpern, and welcome to The Raw Marriage Show, and thanks for joining us. In every episode, we'll have guests who will help us get unstuck and sort out and lighten the stark rawness and heaviness of it all and transform us to crafting something better in our marriage, something that helps us meet at least some of our mutual needs. We have a super show lineup. Tara and Mick Carbo are unplugged in the marriage pulse, and Gail Crowder, bringing Brack the sexy, is in the sexpectation segment. So sit back, chillax, put aside the no way, no how, step back from your relationship, and be encouraged while you try on some new mindsets. One which shows you personally the ways and means to refresh, rekindle, and recharge your marriage. Here's today's raw marriage coaching perspective for your consideration. Fictional couple, Laura and David, could just not get their sex life up and running. It had just come to a grinding halt, and any segue back to it resulted in fights, stress, and arguments. Couples really do need a prompt, even a shove, and really sometimes a push. So why the sexual procrastination, you two? Not feeling very sexy? Well, feeling sexy takes a bit of prep. I said sexy, not horny. Horny and lust, we all know about. But why do so many lose interest or just stop having sex in their marriage. We think about it some more than others. Advertisers are shoving sex in our faces all day, unless of course you're a hermit. Jeans, detergent, cars, perfume, school supplies, and computers all go well with sexy presentations. In the animal kingdom, when it's time to have sex, remarkably, a pair find a way to get it done. Sometimes you even see the birds and deers frolicking or just humping away on something like your dog on your leg. Well, I didn't see them in sweats or flannels or just schlumpy looking as unsexy as you can possibly look. Yes, we are way more complex than animals, but do we have to be? Can't we just get down and do it? The answer for many is a complex web of reasons that keeps us away from our partners. Some of the reasons are legit. You can't get it up. You're dry. It's painful. Not in the mood. Too domesticated. The kids, stressed. Just not into it. Or they're not into it. She, he, no matter how romantic you might be trying to be. It's just been so long, it just seems out of reach, or just plain easier to not, or do it by hand, or read some randy book, or log on to porno. It's less complicated to watch other people doing it. It's difficult to imagine the two of you being so raw and sexy. 
Were you ever raw and sexy? The answer for many is yes. We had hot sex. We were lost in passion, sweaty flesh to sweaty flesh. Yep, that might have been the two of you. Well, if you're still together and you still have a hand or a mouth, well, you got some toys. Yeah, even better. You have a penis and a vagina on hand. Well, perhaps let's borrow some of that heat from the animal kingdom and turn our superior brains off, lose the domesticated for a little while, and find a way to perk up those onboard sex glands and make something happen. If your relationship is worth it, sometimes look your best. Even show a little skin. Mysterious beats the hell out of boredom. The big event doesn't always have to happen. Just help each other turn the sexy part of you on. And this will be a good overture and a great start to the next time. If you go to the trouble of trying to do it after it's been a while, go the extra mile and plan another time. And stay encouraged and bring some surprises with you to the sandbox. We'll be right back with Tara and Mick Carbo, a unique, refreshing, and inspirational couple. They'll be unplugged in the Marriage Pulse. Hi, Tara. Hi, Mick. It's so great to have you. You guys were so good on the show last year and you came on the podcast this summer and it went so great. It was just great to have you. Maybe let's make it a regular thing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We'd love to. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. People really enjoyed your take on the way it is and and it kind of nailed it for all of us. And and I heard that kind of feedback. Oh, awesome. You married early. We covered that yeah. last year. And you have three kids, and you've persevered through many, many challenges. What's the glue that keeps this all together? Yeah. What's the glue for you, Tara? Yeah, I just really feel like um, it's important to remember your like original commitment. Yes, we're always growing and learning and changing our minds and perspectives. But if we can each keep in mind that Um, you know, I'm an individual on my own journey and living my own life and growing in my own self and Mick the same thing. Uh, You know, we have our individual growth and and our individual experiences that we need to share and just, you know, keeping our commitment of what we um, have intended for our relationship and our vision together, but also allowing each other to grow during that leaves space. And um, I just think that makes it work. Because you stay busy. You yeah. keep it busy and you keep it real. What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, marriage, in my opinion, can be a very bumpy road sometimes, as can any relationship at yeah. work and um, uh, with the kids, with other family members and everything. And I think that really the glue that keeps it all together has to be that commitment or else we'll get upset with each other, somebody gets mad, somebody gets hurt, and then there's separation. And we can exist inside of that separation if we don't have a real ironclad commitment to making it work. So this raw stuff that goes into all of our marriages, all of us who've been married for a long time, what would you call it? Everybody's got names for it. What would you call it, I love it, my Tara? name for this. I have a special name for all of the emotions and judgments and, you know, that you're always this and you're always that. And it creates this, like, atmosphere and this energy in the air. I like to call the witch's brew. Uh-oh. Yeah. The witch's <laughs> brew. So what's it made of? What's it, what's it look like? What, what is this witch's yeah, brew? Yeah, so it's the anger and the sadness and the madness, and it, it does. It creates an energy, and, and when you're inside of this energy... Um, like you can only expect certain things of it. So you really have to be aware and responsible of what all of those emotions and energies you are bringing into a situation because, you know, you're creating that space. How can you have productivity and growth if you're creating the brew? How's this, how's it land on you? How's the witch's brew land on you? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I think that the witch's brew is true. (laughs) In that um, what Tara is saying is absolutely correct. There's this 
thing, uh, you know, another word for it I've heard people say is the dance. Like couples have a dance that they go through and it's, right. uh, it really becomes a habit. And one of the things that I would caution couples about is to, to be cautious of relating to the other person as a fixed object, I like to call it, as something that is not going to change, can't change, won't change, or whatever. So um, an, an interesting thing that happened, uh, actually you were involved in this, we had, we had a conversation about the show on, on Skype one day, and you mentioned that you noticed that I was a little bit out of sorts. I was, I was maybe a little angry, and uh, this it was because I had my therapist hat on. Yeah, right. On Skype, yeah. I had my therapist hat on. I was nice. just like, okay, yeah. I'm tuned into somebody else's life. The witch's yeah, brew it, is here. Well, it's you know we we actually wear it almost like a piece of clothing, Absolutely. so I can I can see how you could tell that I was in that place. And what had happened was we got into one of our witch's brew situations, and we had an argument, and it kind of lasted for a little bit longer than maybe either one of us would have liked. And, and it was really great to hear from you that you noticed because um, somebody on the outside of our relationship being able to see that we were having an issue uh, was really eye-opening to me. So I have it that it's true that this happens and you know it, it does have an impact on our relationship and on our relationship together with other people as well. So people who are married for a long time there's a lot of redundant. Oh, yeah. And people start to believe that you're going to do a certain thing. And you kind of get pegged. Yeah. Um, Mick's going to act this way if I do this. Tara's going to act this way. Zev's going to be this way if I do this. What do you think about that? What do you think about it? How do you combat a belief? I mean, belief, a belief in a religion, a belief. This is a belief that your spouse is actually going to respond. So why even bother, you know? and get an attitude about it. What do you think about that? Well, first I would say it goes back to that commitment. You have to get really clear, we have to get really clear on what we're committed to. And if we're committed to our marriage and it being a happy, productive, thriving marriage, then we kind of have to change our relationship to that whole concept that you're talking to, talking about, right? And we have to be able to declare or just be able to say out loud that change is possible and when we can believe that then the only way to actually f change it is to practice just like anything else so it's about uh, maybe pulling in an outside resource like a therapist or a friend or um, somebody that we can trust to uh, have a conversation about what maybe somebody from the outside can see and then have a conversation about what we can change, and then just practice. And with practice comes, you know, striking out, failing, and just being able to have the ability to get back up again and take another swing, uh, I think is what really makes the difference. Do you think that sometimes your spouse is saying something to you and you just can't really hear it? The message is so harsh. It's covering up with the real message, the real hidden. Have you ever had that happen yeah. where it's just so hard to hear what Mick, um, it's hard for me to hear what Debbie's thinking because I'm, um, it's, it's, something's harsh and I can't see the real message. Yeah. It's not easy to find. Yeah. How Judgment's do you find it? Away. How yeah. do you find the real message in all that mess? Yeah, and it's hard because, you know, we're blessed because we both, um, you know, have the vision to change and make improvements in our relationship. So not everybody's all on that same page with their spouse. So we feel really grateful for that. But also in a moment, not everybody, uh, you know, I might be open-minded and ready to, you know, take on a new practice and he's heated, you know what I mean? Or he might be like in a more fixed place and ready, you know, to grow. And I'm like, whatever, I don't want to talk about this right now, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it does take both people being in in that space at the same time and um, you know again like giving each other the space for growth which is a challenge so you have you can't be you're always in your never you really have to be in that space where you're opening up for the other to grow I think if we want our, our marriages to move forward we got to do something different we have to change up because yeah. if we don't switch up and we stay on that same thing we're not going to hear what what's being told mm -hmm. to us, and we're going to get in this funk, this raw, yeah. um, messy funk. But uh, 
this has been so good. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to doing this a lot, Mick, a lot, Tara. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. This was fun, and thank you so much. Thank you, Zoe. Um, for Our being pleasure. here today. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the glue that keeps your marriage together? Let us know with your comments. And next time with the Carbos, Tara and Mick are brains and temptations. How we negatively cope when our marriage is hurting and we need some relief. And now it's time for Sexpectations. Be right back with Gail Crowder and her new book, Keeping Your Legs Open. I introduce you to our guest today and to get you focused and started on reclaiming your marriage I want you to have a free gift the three-day recharge your marriage challenge it's a chance for the two of you to try something just the two of you and see if you can meet the challenge to get free access log on to rechargeshow.com and transform your marriage what if you're trying to bring the sexy back to your marriage and your spouse is preoccupied, stressed, or at worst, indifferent to your thoughtful efforts? You want to feel that tingly, sexy, and you want to feel it with a spouse who seems to have lost focus on your needs and desires. What do you do to reclaim your sexy? Well, today, we are fortunate to have a great guest, Gail Crowder, wife, mother, community involved, who has been helping spouses spice their marriages up and will share some of her wisdom and maybe some secrets she's accumulated in changing lives through her uh, conference series, Bringing Sexy Back to Your Relationship. We had you on the podcast in the summertime. And now you have this new book, Keep Your Legs Open. Yes. Oh, my God. I am super excited about this book. This book has um, been a long time coming. It took me about eight years to write it because I really wanted to write a guide for wives all over the world to really um, be able to explore all their sexual desires and be able to communicate them to their husbands. I love the name. When I saw the book come out and I saw it, I put it right on Facebook. I don't put everything on Facebook. I just thought it was so relevant, so stark, so straight up. And um, it, 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 there's a message in the cover, and it was a really important Oh, absolutely. Message. It is a message in the cover. With this book cover, it has sparked um, anywhere from I love it from men, I get the best results, you know. Um, no to, doubt. From, to women saying, what do you mean keep your legs open, you know, uh, that, that, you know, good girls don't do those kind of things. Or, exactly. you know, why did you put a lady with pumps, you know, who goes to bed with pumps on, all those kind of things. But um, I will tell you the reaction has been mixed. Um, it's been, I've gotten better reactions from men than women, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's something that needed to be said and it's something that needed to be written and um, when you really dive into the book I think it really explores all the things that we're feeling as women but we just don't want to say to our husbands and so I talk about orgasms I talk about how to achieve them I talk about um, you know rate your sex drive and how to match your sex drive with your husband I talk about how to take charge of your bedroom I talk about how to set romance I talk about so many different things in this book, and so it was, uh, again, it was something that needed to be said, and it was something that I did not have, and I wanted to create that for, for wives all over the world. So it's a really big message that you're telling Absolutely. women and telling men. Do you tell them differently, or is it, you know, you're speaking to women in this case? For I'm them speaking to? to women, but I've had men buy the book for their wives, um, and it, it really is coming from a, a, a perspective of a woman. Um, because again, uh, it was something that I did not have, and it was not something that was readily discussed um, in in my circles, not in my home growing up. 
Um, and so I came from a single parent home, so I didn't see love and affection. I didn't see any of those things. And so um, I had to search for them. And unfortunately, I searched for them in the first seven years of my marriage, and I literally killed my marriage. Mm -hmm. And so um, the second half of my marriage has been great because I've, I've gotten the information that I need, and I want to share that with women all over the world. But important for generations, mommies and daddies, and telling their daughters to keep their legs closed. <laughs> and then that when they're open, something or something of everything happens. So what say you about that? I believe that if you're married, you should keep your legs open. I think that um, leads for a healthy uh, marriage. You know, when you talk to most people who are having problems in their marriage, and I was one of those people, the biggest two things are finances and the lack of sex and intimacy. So I just been charged to deal with the sex and intimacy part because I know that was a, a part that we struggled in my own marriage because I was not being sexually satisfied. And I didn't know how to communicate that to my husband. So it's like if you can't can't tell him what you want, how can you get what you want and get your, your needs met? And so with this book, I talk about all the things that I did not get when I was 21 years old and got married. Some people must go, yeah, that would have, that's nice to know. Why didn't somebody tell me this? And you know, again, we don't hear about it in school. They don't teach us how to be and stay married in school. People would probably have a big problem about it, but somewhere, somebody, and I think it's in good hands, Gail Crowder, um, it landed Absolutely. on your lap to tell. Absolutely, and I, I think um, we should be talking about it. In this day and age, we really should be talking about it because you have so many people who are suffering in their marriage. Mar the divorce rate is through the roof, and a through lot of times roof. it's stuff that can be... Um, um, taken care of if you just have the information available and not be afraid to talk about it and that's why I love what you do and I love what I do because I just think it's something that's really needed to be said and, and, I, and I thank you for allowing me to be giving me a platform to be able to say it. What's the major message without giving it away what's the major message of the book? The yeah. major message of the book that you can have great sex and you can start today. And even if it's just been lagging and it's been, you can oh, turn it around. You can turn you it can around because I tell you how to turn it around and I tell you how to get what you want from your spouse. And I believe you do. Kim. I do. I, I really do. You, I really do. do. Tell us about your conferences, bringing back the sexy. That's um, something that you've been involved in for a long time, doing great work for women. What kind of women go? What, what do they get? What do they see? What are they looking for? I, this will be going in 2017, I mean 2016, it will be my, going into my seventh year. Um, bringing sexy back to the marriage is something that has grown organically. I have women coming from all over the world, and I literally can say that because I just had somebody that um, registered from Alaska um, the other day, and what they will get is a conference like no other. You will learn how to do a sexy chair dance for your husband. You will learn, um, um, this year I have a doctor come in about, um, talk to women about a male sexual health because sometimes men are suffering in that area. I have uh, women that will, uh, a photographer that will um, offer boudoir photography there. We have, um, th we're talking about the seven principles of being a sexy wife this year. So it's so many different things that we cover at bringing sexy back to the marriage. It's just not the surface stuff, we go deep. Um, and so we provide all of those resources for women all at one conference. Wow. So this is a personal show. What does personal hygiene have to do with bringing the sexy back? I know you refer to something like grooming your, your garden. garden. Absolutely. What is that all about? Well, grooming your garden came from, I do a, a, a segment with men, um, mainly during the summer called A Male's Perspective. And I have polled men from all over the world. And one of the biggest things that men talk about is women not um, grooming their garden. And it's really taking care of their vaginas, to be honest with you. And so um, that Thank is. Thank you a, for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and so that's, I cover this, that in your, this book as well. And it's really just making sure that you keep your vagina healthy and knowing the signs when it's not healthy. Because again, um, that's part of being, you know, a sexual being and really knowing what your vagina is saying. And a lot of times, we're not grooming it in order to um, make it pleasurable and appealing to our husbands. A so. lot of time we're not grooming, period. There you, know, you go. And we're not wearing things that, you know, and it just, there's a message. It is uh, a message. I don't want to 
have sex. There you, know, you go. And you, so, or you don't look like you want to have it, or you know, I'm not feeling it. Or, yeah, and so I, I, I talk about that as well. After periods of being ignored, mm -hmm. some people they there's some people who believe that's just the way it's supposed to be. You get married at 21, and then it you know it's all hot and whoopie do, and then it kind of dies and dies into something that you're ex expected. Do you think people should just wait around? Absolutely what, what, not. What should they do? I think if if you're in a, a situation, and I believe it's like a baking a cake. If you want a different result, you got to put a different ingredient in. And we were just talking about that. And so if you if you want to have a better sex life, you're going to have to take charge of that, whether you're the woman or the man. And I always tell women schedule sex and jump your husbands on a regular basis. <laughs> And, and I, I just, I feel that it, that is what's lacking. We want to, the other person to keep doing something for us, but when are you going to start doing something for them? And so um, I know when me and my husband's sex life was at a near zero level, I had to start taking charge. I had to start um, 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 sewing what I wanted. And so for me, it was like, you know, transforming into a different person. Um, creating costumes and doing all kind of different things um, to keep my marriage spicy. I've been married 27 years and you know eventually you know you get at this low and my thing is is that I want to spend the rest of my life with my husband and I know that sex and intimacy is a big part of marriage so I decided that I'm in it to win it and I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to make him happy in that area. Because you're committed. Yeah, you're absolutely. Committed to your marriage. Absolutely. So I can't wish you the best great luck and success on this book. I think it's an important book. It's a small book, but it's a very important book. It's huge. Uh, the, the message is huge. And I th again, I think they put the right person on this and that you continue to go out and do the wonderful things you're doing for women and they go home to their husbands and, and, and act it out or do it out and <laughs> that they end up happy, sexy, and uh, relieved. Absolutely. We need relief in this world. You really do need Thanks relief. Thanks so much, all Gail. Right. Thank you so pleasure. much for having me. Pleasure. Sure. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Stay tuned for more Raw Marriage coming your way in the months ahead. Please join the dialogue. Send in questions and comments. First name and town only. Zev at rechargeyourmarriagenow.com. To connect with Mick and Tara Carbo, To connect with Gail Crowder and get your hands on her new book and for an inside look at her unique coaching approach, log on to, and here's where to find me at rechargeyourmarriagenow.com. Reconnect for a deeper, more fulfilling relationship, spice up your marriage, and feel the love again. Follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page subscribe to my YouTube channel, and listen to my podcast, The Raw Marriage Podcast, which you can download for free from iTunes. Finally, try some forgiveness if you can. Hug, kiss, touch, talk, cuddle, get out more, laugh a little, say you're sorry sometimes. Remember, we are our mistakes and our successes. So it's okay. We're only human. You can try again. I'm Zev Halpern. See you next time for the Raw Marriage Show.